Welcome back to another episode of WTF. It's the show that aims to take a deep dive in some of the acts performing across festival season 2020. Today we're looking at an artist which was due to play Glastonbury 2020. I started writing this video just before I found out the news that Glastonbury's been cancelled. Obviously I put out a video this week which, which spoke in depth about, you know, where we're at with, with all of this and everyone has been so, so very kind and clearly these videos mean a lot to, to some people so I'm going to continue on, probably once a week doing a Glastonbury video because apart from anything else I was really excited to talk about some of the, the artists that are playing and today's artist is one that I discovered I think eight years ago now and just fell in love with from the, from the get-go. He's an incredibly talented guy, amazing, amazing DJ, producer, electronic artist, singer, everything all around really. A really, really great, a really, really great guy. He's known as Caribou. If you've never heard of him before, hopefully this video will help answer the question. Who the f*** is Caribou? <laughs> Daniel Victor Snaith also known as Caribou, is from Dundas, Ontario, Canada. Genre-wise, he's described as Electronica, IDM, that's intelligent dance music, I believe. Folktronica, non-psychedelica, shoegazer, and dream pop. Okay, well, I'll take all of those. I've always regarded Caribou as one of the holy trifecta of, of electronic artists. Him, Fortet, and Bonobo. Oh, All three of them, I think, inspire each other and really push the boundaries of kind of having genreless music. However, these days, I think it's more of a kind of quinfecta than a trifecta, as I'd definitely also be adding subtract and burial to that list. We can talk about others that are amazing as well. Hudson Mohawk, Mount Kimby, James Blake, they all, they all get mentions. He started making music as a hobby after I bought a basic synthesizer and used my dad's computer to start making music and started making music that owed something to techno and owed something to yes. It sounds like the world's worst musical combination, but it was a start. In 1999, making music was still a hobby for him when he attained a summer placement at HP Labs in Bristol and whilst attending the Big Chill Festival, bumped into a man called Kieran Hebden, of whom he would book to come play shows back in Canada and help secure his first record deal, the two became lifelong friends. Friends. You may better know Kieran as Fortet. He originally started recording music under the name Manitoba, a place in Canada, I assume, and released two studio albums under the moniker, Start Breaking My Heart, which featured the record's Paul's birthday in 2001. and Up In Flames, which featured the records Juggernaut and Hendrix with Co. in 2003. <laughs> Subsequently, after being threatened by a lawsuit from Richard Handsome Dick Manitoba, real name Richard Blum, was forced to change his name and decided on Caribou. The only connection I can make between the two is that a caribou is another name for a reindeer and they're, like, popular in Canada. Manitoba's also a place in Canada. Up in Flames would then go on to be re-released by Domino Records and updated artwork. Domino is a British independent record label based at, based in London. Some heavy hitters signed to this label. They include Animal Collective, Arctic Monkeys, Fortet, Georgia, Hot Chip, and many, many more. In 2005, he released his third album, which is his first album under the guise of Caribou, but it was his third al studio album, The Milk of Human Kindness. This was a quote taken from William Shakespeare's play Macbeth. However, he's been quoted as saying that he saw it on the back of a milk truck. In promotion for this album, he released three singles, Yeti, Barn Owl, and Pelican Narrows.
In 2007, he followed up with his fourth studio album, Andorra, which featured the single Eli. Plus popular album track and album opener, Melody Day. Andorra would go on to receive critical acclaim and would end up winning the 2008 Polaris Music Prize, bagging Caribou a $20,000 prize to take home. It wasn't until 2010 that I really started to pay attention. My old, my old housemate Johnny Green, shout out to Johnny Green. It's always, you know what, sometimes we need to shout out the people that, are, that introduce us to new music. Shout out those people. Johnny would always play the record Sun before we would go for a night out. It was an amazing record. Sun, 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 sun. Sun. Sun was taken from his incredibly influential album Swim. He described Swim as a result of pretty much me getting up every day and wanting to work on music, working constantly on it, making loads and loads of music and then just sifting through it to find bits that I like. The album was met with even more critical acclaim and would make it onto many tastemakers album of the year list. Publications that included Swim on the end of year list included 58th for The Enemy, 17th for Pitchfork, 6th for The Guardian, 1st for Resident advisor and first for mix mag the album was led led by the record odessa which is his most popular record on 16 million hits on youtube and for the dark fruits fans out there it also featured on fifa 11 the album also included records leave house and bowls A remix of the album would also happen in 2010, featuring remixes by incredible other incredible artists such as Fuck Buttons, Gold Panda, and DJ Koze. In 2012, he followed this up with the record Jio Long under the new moniker of Daphne. This included records Yes and Yeah Yeah. <laughs> The project had more of a dance floor kind of feel. It was less about lyrics and singing and more about synthesizers and, and kind of DJ friendly beats. In 2014, he followed this up with the seminal album, Our Love. It debuted with critical acclaim, included the incredible I Can't Do Without You. <laughs> alongside Our Love. Your love will set you free. All I ever need. And Mars. The album was very highly regarded, being nominated for a Grammy for Best Dance Slash Electronic Album. It made it to number eight in the UK album chart and recently made it to number 84 on the top 200 records of the 2010s, published by Pitchfork. In 2017, he followed up with his second release under, under the moniker of Daphne, entitled Joy May, Joy, oh, Jolly May, Jolly May, which included the record Tin, and was self-released on his own record, Jailong. Editor's notes on Apple Music described the album as thumping house, techno, and funk elements from Dan Snaith. Simple, short, sweet. Last year in 2019, he followed this up with the sizzling EP, headed by the record of the same name, a wonderfully glitzy disco record that just makes you cry out for some sunshine. Thank God we have records like this and that this whole thing is happening whilst the sun is out is, you know, is all I can say really. It was hammered as a record by Annie Mack and it, yeah, a record that just it makes you excited for summer. And late last year, he announced that Caribou was returning, releasing a brand new record, Home, a record that plays homage to that wonderful kind of turn of the century, trip hop era, I guess before turn of the century really. It's like Big B meets trip hop. DJ Shadow, Fatboy Slim, The Avalanches, but then with like soft vocals of people like Simon and Garfunkel or Bon Iver. Yeah, she's going home. Baby, I'm home, I'm home. 
He followed up home with the single You and I. You and I has this wonderful 80s sound, kind of in the way that the Drive soundtrack does, whilst also having this incredible ability to be incredibly new and current and sound like a trap Hudson Mohawk beat. Alongside these two, he released the phenomenal Never Come Back, which preceded the release of his 10th studio album entitled Suddenly. Never Come Back is easily one of the best records of the year easily one of the best records of the year and one that I'm really looking forward to seeing live. I really can't wait. I'm just gutted that it's not going to be at Glastonbury. Uh, they usually do a whole bit about the history of them playing places and that kind of stuff. I don't think I need to do that. This isn't about the festival, this is just about getting excited about the art. I, one day, uh, do you know, it's just been really wonderful recording, recording these videos and doing the research on, on Caribou. Reading of Leeds was so much fun last year, I discovered so much. The videos I loved doing were artists that I knew like three or four songs and just went in on them, went full ham, and I just got obsessed. This is exactly what's happened with Caribou, and it's great to have another festival that I can do that with. So I'll be continuing to make videos about Glastonbury artists. I've got a big list of them, and it's, it's something that isn't going to go anywhere. You know, I, I think what I've learned from the video I put out last week is that you guys just enjoy watching the content rather than the festival. And that is honestly, it's so, so lovely to hear that. And as long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making. In the next week or so, I will have a, a, a new house to move into. So I can um, start on this new little podcast. It's literally, I'm getting the final bits done and then it's gonna be off. I'm also starting to share stuff on TikTok and Instagram. If you're interested in kind of connecting with me, then it's at Tequila Face on all social medias. And I'm gonna be sharing as much music as I possibly can at a time when we are bored AF sat inside. Let's at least have music to keep us going through it. All right, I hope everyone is staying safe. You know, these are really weird times. It's horrible, but also it's the potential to be absolutely stunning and beautiful. We can really, really make the most of this time. I highly recommend that you pick up a guitar or learn piano or teach yourself Photoshop or put stick a camera up and just record yourself talking to it like an idiot and just get that out of the way because you're never gonna have a time like this again in your entire life. It's sad, it's really dark, it's some really horrible things happening in the world, but I honestly, only see this as an opportunity to, to make. Let me know your thoughts on this. I wanna share more. Let's help keep the conversation going. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Anyway, take it easy. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.